GAC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation. And welcome to Fire Lake Arena in Shawnee, Oklahoma. It's semifinal Saturday for the Women's Great American Conference Basketball Championships here on the GAC Network. Hi, everyone. Luke McConnell, Joey McWilliams here for the ninth segment of the semifinal Saturday. It's the women taking center stage tonight. And here tonight, the number one seed, Southern Nazarene, taking on number four seed, Henderson State. And, Joey, we've had a great day thus far. Let's take a look at how the teams got here. Henderson State, a huge win against Arkansas Tech yesterday, 82 to 62. The Reddy shot 47% and made 12 threes, but it was the rebounding that was the big deal yesterday, out rebounding the Golden Suns 49-38 and being even on the offensive glass, a huge benefit for the Reddies last night. They also held Tech to just 33% shooting in the contest as they won going away. It was a very emotional win for the Reddies, which snapped a five-game losing streak in postseason play to the Golden Suns. On the other side, Southern Nazarene been off since Thursday evening when they dominated the Oklahoma Baptist Bison in the first game of the women's side. Winning that one 73 to 42. They held the Bison to just 10 points in the first half. That's right, 10 points in the first half, not first quarter, first half and just three of 25 shooting in the first half. They turned 15 offensive rebounds into 18 second chance points and held the Bison to 28% shooting for the game. The Crimson Storm number seven this week in the national coaches poll looked every bit of a top 10 team and a national title contender on Thursday night. There you see Coach Trent May and Jill Thomas. Trent May in his sixth year at SNU has developed quite the juggernaut in Bethany. Jill Thomas looking to lead her team to the GAC tournament final for the first time in Henderson State history. Right now, we'll, we will step aside the national anthem, the starting lineups, and the opening tip coming up next here from Fire Lake Arena. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there you don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You gotta get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform, they need to be the best. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs, that's where we are really gonna turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're gonna perform better. With the playing of our national anthem.
Welcome back to Fire Lake Arena. The starting lineups being introduced on the floor right now. Let's run through them for you. First, for the number four seed, the Henderson State Reddies of Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Number one, senior guard Tori Gittins, 5'11 from Sherman, Texas. She is the GAC newcomer of the year this year. Number two, senior guard Jada Pickens, 5'6 out of Conway, Arkansas. Number 10, senior guard Ashley Farrar, 5'11 out of Green Forest. Arkansas, all GAC first team member. Number 11, sophomore guard Brindley Huggins, 5'10 out of Pingburg, Arkansas. And number 33, junior forward Bobby Basil, six foot out of the Woodlands, Texas. The Reddies are coached by Jill Thomas in her 11th season as the head coach with the win last night against Arkansas Tech became the all-time winningest coach in Reddy's women's basketball history. Assistant coaches are Christina Harvey and Josh Boland. And now for the number one seed, the Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm of Bethany, Oklahoma. Number four, senior guard Lauren Reether, 5'5 from Oklahoma City, a unanimous first team all GAC member. Number five, senior forward Hannah Giddy, 6'2 out of Melbourne, Australia. She is the back-to-back -back GAC Defensive Player of the Year and an all-GAC first team member. Number 12, senior guard Emily Monahan, 5'9 out of Melbourne, Australia. She's an honorable mention, all GAC member. Number 15, senior forward Georgia Adams, 5'10 out of Perth, Australia. And rounding out the starting lineups, number 24, senior guard Abby Giles, 5'7 out of Searcy, Arkansas. The Crimson Storm are coached by Trent May in his sixth season at Southern Nazarene. Assistant coaches Kayla Tucker, Sydney Salvato, and Greg Gilman. Joey, we got a great matchup on our hands. Both teams were dominant in their quarterfinal wins. We'll see which team maintains that same level of play here tonight. Yeah, it would be tough to imagine that both the teams could be able to maintain that same level. Obviously, the results would not be the same. One team has to come out on top. But the simple fact of the level of play that bro both brought to the table on Thursday night and Friday night, respectively, it's just so impressive to watch. Both teams came in ready to go. Again, the Reddies, an 82-62 win over Arkansas Tech. The Crimson Storm, a 73-42 win over Oklahoma Baptist. Good crowd on hand, especially for those clad in crimson for the Crimson Storm. Both teams clad in crimson this evening, Joey, <laughs> so can't necessarily go off that. Basil wins the tip over to Torrey Giddens. It'll be the Reddies with possession to start the ball game. Here's Pickens, steps around Reether, running hook is up and in, and just like that, the Reddies on the board. Very impressive. Nice look. Reether hesitates, looking for Giddy. Went over her head, but right to Georgia Adams in the corner. Giddy turned, no one was on her. Now she picks up her dribble. Here's Adams, back to Giddy. 10 on the shot clock. Giddy backing down on Basil. Steps through, puts it up, missed the shot. Monahan, the offensive rebound for Southern Nazarene. Fresh 20 for the Crimson Storm. See how the Reddies handle this defensively. Giddy again backing down on Basil. Goes to the left hand this time. That one's short. So 0 for 2 for Hannah Giddy on that trip, and here come the Reddies. Well, so far, it, it, it's effective. It's a man-to-man -man defense, but if you notice there, Luke, nobody came to help, though. Those are just two missed shots from Giddy. She's not going to miss fire all night. Pickens across the paint, pivoting, pivoting, outside to Farrar. Farrar across the lane, hangs, and bounces it in for two. And the Reddies with a 4-0 lead. Great start for Henderson State. They pushed the Crimson Storm in Bethany earlier this year. SNU won that one 67-62, but trailed in the fourth quarter. Lauren Reether's three-pointer, no good. Loose ball corralled by Giles, another offensive rebound for SNU. Here's Giddy going to work again in the post. 
Pivots goes back to the left hand, and that one goes in for two. Jill Thomas wanting a travel on that. Giddy not changing the pivot foot there, and Huggins lost the basketball. It's loose, still loose, and SNU comes away with a turnover. Reether pushing tempo into the front court. Drive and kick outside Adams now. Knocked away from her, stolen by Basil. It comes Pickens the other way. Kicks it out. Right wing, Farrar, three, yes! <laughs> wow. So far, Joey, it's the Reddies who look the same <laughs> as they did in their quarterfinal matchup. Yeah, the intensity level so high from both these teams. Here's Adams, sets her feet, fires a three to answer. It's off the back iron. Loose ball, Reether, an offensive rebound. Crimson Storm grabbed 15 offensive rebounds on Thursday, already three in the first quarter tonight. Adams backing down on Pickens, stops, steps through, hit the underside of the rim, got her own miss, tried to get it to Giddy, it's stolen by Gittens. Gittens up ahead to Farrar, drives, baseline, hangs, oh, hits. Oh, oh. And the Reddies running and gunning early, it's nine to two. Showing no fear against the number seven team in the land. Coach Reether May. behind the pick from Giddy drives. Left hand layup good. Yeah, he's letting his team work this one out. I think it's a good decision. Let him play. The intensity level is there. The shots just haven't fallen. That can be corrected. Pickens drives all the way to the block, throws it up, and it goes in. Pickens. Pickens got knocked off balance a little bit, just kind of threw it toward the rim, Joey, but the Reddies have been quite the beneficiaries of the soft rim thus far. Reether trying to post up Giddy, long way from the basket against Basil. Goes to work inside, takes her to the right hand, off glass, that one falls off. Trent May with a wry smile over there on the sideline. Huggins had 21 on Friday night. Gittins drives right. Defense from Abby Giles, the former ready. Gittins to the right block, pulls up. That rolls off. Giddy clears the glass for SNU. It's actually a surprise. I mean, everything else hit around the rim and fell. Monahan hesitates and a Foul is called on Ashley Farrar. She's claiming Monahan flopped. And there certainly was probably some embellishment on the contact. Uh -huh. uh, there's also two hands up top on Farrar, and that's going to be the call every time when you put two hands on an offensive player. Reether got around Pickens, left the ball behind her, though, and a steal for Pickens. Now she left the ball behind, picks it back up. Driving all the way to the basket, creates some space and scores. Trent May wants time. The Reddies fired up to start this one, and they have a 13 4 lead. Five minutes into the first quarter. Timeout on the court. 4.54 to go in the opening segment. We'll be back with more on the GAC Sports Network. Everyone tells you to think about the future. But we know there's growth in the journey. At ATU, we value this moment because here, nature becomes your classroom. So breathe it in. You've got this. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Henderson State leads this one 13 to four and 
Joey, they're doing it all over the court. Jada Pickens, six points inside. Ashley Farrar with seven. The Reddies are six of seven from the field. And Samantha Roop was in the Henderson State huddle. Henderson State head coach Jill Thomas is very pleased with how things are going right now, but they know that Southern Nazarene is plotting something offensively for that halftime break. I'm sorry. Here's right off the bat, Georgia Adams from the left wing for three. Well, and Samantha's right. They did come out of the break, firing there. Shots are going to fall eventually, so Henderson State's just going to have to be able to weather it when the time comes. In the meantime, that time hasn't arrived. Pickens just getting to the basket and just putting up those short shots in the paint. Just really taking advantage of Lauren Reether here in the early going. She's got eight on four of four shooting. Reether to the basket, and she puts in a two-pointer with the left hand. Huggins drives, cut off, they swing it out. Farrar for three again, that's no good. Giles soars in for the rebound. Two on four break, Giles drives right to the basket. Scoop layup, no good. Didn't have numbers. And here come the Reddies. 15-9, Henderson State with the lead. Pickens again from the middle of the paint. Again it falls. Jada Pickens. She is five for five. And those have not all been easy shots. Here's Monahan working on Gittens to the block. Off glass and good. Emily Monahan. No shortage of points in the early going. 17-11 readies. Back and forth we go. Adams switches on to Pickens and Reether now guarding Huggins. Swing it out. Pickens, long two on the way. It's good. Jada Pickens for six. What a start for Jada Pickens tonight. The senior out of Conway, Arkansas. Missed most of last year with an ACL injury, but she is torching the Crimson Storm right now. And the defense forced that turnover, a throw to no one in particular. Subs here for both teams. Pickens and Farrar check out. They have all 19 of the Reddy's points. <laughs> Olivia Allen and J.J. Eddins in. Jenna Bay in for SNU as Georgia Adams takes a seat. Allen had it knocked away. Here comes Monahan with it. Eddins in pursuit. Monahan goes in and lays it in for two. Oh Defense to offense for the Crimson Storm. The lead down to six, 19-13. Reddies have led throughout here in this first quarter. Huggins to the basket. Too strong. Here's Reether. SNU pushing. Reether steps around, getting high off the glass for two. And Farrar getting set to check back in. Coach Thomas has seen enough just after four quick points. Edens driving right side of the paint. Spins on the block, off glass and good. Joey, did you bring your oxygen tonight? Because <laughs> that's what both teams are going to need after this one. Holy smokes, the pace. 21-15, Reddies coming up on 90 seconds to go. First quarter. Reether hides behind the Giddy pick. Giddy wants it. She's got it at the left elbow. Faces up on Basil, taking her to the block. Got her around her, throws it up, missed the shot. And Eddins has it. Yeah, she was looking for contact there, which she didn't find. Here's Gittens, the nation's leading three-point shooter at 51%. Eddins spins in the paint, right-hand hook, that's short. Loose ball, Eddins got it back. Outside, Allen thought about the three, instead drives baseline, floater off glass, over Giddy and good. Olivia Allen. That was a really nice look, stop and pop right there. Didn't go into the defense, just took care of business. Here's Monahan, top of the key. The Reddies lead by eight, 40 seconds to go in the quarter. Monahan, nice dish to the cutting Giddy, and she puts it in off the glass. Hannah Giddy now with four after 30 points on Thursday against Oklahoma Baptist. Four second difference, game to shot clock. 
We come up on 20 seconds to go in the period. Huggins pivoting. It dies on the back iron, finally bounces off. The Crimson Storm breathed a sigh of relief on that one. One shot here for the Crimson Storm with 10 seconds in the period. Reether to Giddy on the roll to the basket. Missed the shot. Genebe, the offensive rebound. Put it back up. Blocked by Gittens, but a foul. Fouls on Bobby Basil. Fouls on Bobby Basil. This Her first. first. Second. second team foul with 3.2 seconds on the clock. And Jenna Bay going to the free throw line for two shots. You know, you might need some oxygen too. You have to take a breath here every so often. This is impressive. And the question, I think we've answered the question at least through the first nearly 10 minutes, which team was gonna bring the intensity? They both did. Absolutely. Bay misses the first free throw. She's got one more. You see Trent May, his sixth year as head coach at SNU. Bay goes one for two to make it a five point game. Allen had it poked away by Reether, and that's how the first quarter comes to an end. The Reddies with a quarter to be proud of. 23 to 18, Henderson State on top of the number one seed Southern Nazarene after 10 minutes of play. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter here on the GAC Sports Network. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Jada Pickens has been outstanding tonight for Henderson State thus far. Perfect from the field. Six of six, 12 points, doing it in traditional ways and unorthodox ways. The senior from Conway, putting the Reddies out in front by five after one quarter of play. Yeah, and she, she even got a break in there too. Took three minutes of rest. Farrar came back in and now Pickens is checked back in as well. To begin the second quarter of play. Carly Gassaway out there for Emily Monahan to start the second quarter for SNU. Pickens back out there. McKenna Winans out there for the first time for Henderson State. 70% shooting for and an offensive foul is the call on SNU's Lauren Reether setting an illegal screen trying to free up Jenna Bay. 70% shooting for the Reddies in the first quarter. SNU no slouch at 47%. A lot of offense there. Which defense will rise up first? Edens in the paint needs some help. Here's Ferrar to the basket on her former teammate, left it short. Good defense there by Giles, and Giddy clears. Giddy a long way from the basket here. Gives it to Gassaway. Reether left to the pick. He gets it to Giddy. Ten on the shot clock. Cross court skip pass to Gassaway. Head fake. Drives all the way to the basket. And the left hand layup goes for Carly Gassaway. Gassaway. Gassaway, sophomore out of Choctaw, Oklahoma, just down the street. Now she had a big night on Thursday night. 12 minutes, had 12 points off four three pointers. Pickens finally misses. Offensive rebound. Winans, three pointer for Huggins. Wesley Huggins for three. I don't know which defense really can stand up to this. I, it's, it, it's almost a point where the offensive energy is going to have to wane a little bit. These teams are both jacked up. They're ready to go. So the Nazarene finally getting some of the shots to fall. They've had opportunities. Now they're starting to convert. Five on the clock for Giddy. Working on Winans. Left hand shot, no good, but she was fouled. She heads to the line for two free throws. 
That was on McKenna Winans. That's her point to first recognition first really quickly. Luke, that first fourth. quarter, you were talking at the break is how quickly it went by. It went by very, very fast in real time. No fouls called on either team. Giddy's first free throw is up and in. One more to come. Giddy, 60% at the free throw line this season. Not the best free throw shooter. But she goes two for two there. Cuts the lead for Henderson State to four. SNU, one of the top defenses in the nation. Fifth in scoring and fifth in field goal percentage defense. Been the hallmark of Trent May's squad since he got there. Pickens high off the glass over Giddy. What a shot from Jada Pickens. What a performance. How seven for seven sound. Jill Thomas looking for the foul. Here's Reether circling underneath. Reverse layup. That's good. You know, Joey, that, you know who that reminded me of right there? Briley Moon. That was Briley Moon's patented move. Sneak in underneath and just kind of camp out under the rim for a second and then throw in a reverse layup. That's exactly right. what that reminded me of. Former Southeastern Oklahoma State great. Huggins holding with eight. Outside, Eddins. Eddins cut off, forces it up. It's short, got her own miss though and a crowd of SNU players still working and a jump ball is the call. Possession arrow keeps it with Henderson State. Well, and, and Coach May's frustrated. You saw this, the horn oh, sound, the but the, the ball hit the rim. They didn't need to stop play. The horn sounded because the clock had wound down, but the ball hit the rim, so she was still playing through. There was some frustration from some of the people, and I believe the Southern Nazarene defense let up just a little bit with that buzzer sounding. Here's Winans, and a reach in foul coming on Abby Giles. Uh, Winans pivoted into the paint, and Giles committed the reach in foul, her first. Second team foul on the Crimson Storm. 7.04 to go second quarter. Henderson leads 28-24. Edens. Here's Pickens, giving space, fires a three. She knocks it down. Why not for Jada Pickens? 17. It's the only thing she hadn't done to that point. Well, she hasn't shot a free throw yet, but she hadn't shot from outside the arc. Check that off your bingo card. Reether driving, backing her down, pivots around, left the left hand layup short, loose ball, Bay the offensive rebound for SNU. She had five on Thursday night against Oklahoma Baptist. That's her second tonight. Reether run off the line by Farrar, gives it to Giddy. Giddy stops, left it short, a lot of contact, no call. Here comes Pickens the other way for Henderson. Reddy's leading by seven, outside Farrar. Thought about the three, instead she drives. Kicks it out to Gittens. Pickens, another three. Oh my goodness, she's unconscious. Wow. She's Just got 20 points in 14 points. minutes of game action. <laughs> Nothing else to say, except that Jada Pickens is sizzling hot right now. Giddy to the left hand, cans it for two. The only thing that might cool off Jada Pickens right now, Joey, is halftime. You know, that's a valid point. I thought about that a little bit earlier. What are they gonna do when they switch ends? Gittens missed the shot. Giddy another rebound for SNU. And again, the Crimson Storm have not played poorly offensively here in the first half. They're shooting 50% themselves. The Reddies, 63% and four threes. Giddy's pass a little bit wide of Carly Gassaway. It goes out of bounds. Monahan checks back in for Jenna Bay. Emily Monahan. 34-26 Reddies. Olivia Allen also back in for Henderson State. 
Ferrar slips down on the pass. It's a all right. to throw the ball, too, because that's been a, <laughs> a quick, almost anticipated traveling call of late. Pickens backing down on Monahan, who now has the assignment of trying to cool off the red-hot senior. Allen creates some space off glass with the left hand. He's sneaky forearm there, just enough to get Reether off balance, and Allen able to step through with the left hand. She's a spark plug for this team off the bench. Left elbow, Giddy, crowded by Basil. Right hand hooks, no good. Good defense there by Basil. Pickens outside, Allen's three, good. <laughs> the Reddies are just scorching hot right now. They lead this one 39-26. They're shooting six, over 65% from the field with 4.12 to go in the first half. Timeout on the court. We'll be back with more. This is the GAC Sports Network. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but strength, knowledge, and wisdom are what you build along the way. There's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, you write your own script to what comes next. So here's your cue. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. <laughs> Before the house, before the office, the late nights and new bosses. Before the last hugs, the wins and the losses. Before building the team, before building yourself. The rise and grinds, all day, every days. Before the letter, before the dream, there was a kid who loved to play. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. One coach very pleased, one coach very frustrated. We'll let you guess which one as Henderson State leads this 39-26 with 4.12 to go in the first half. Samantha Roop was in the SNU huddle. Hey, Luke, yeah, Coach May was fired up at his players. He comments on their defensive lack of, and he has a defensive plan, so let's see if we can see it now. Monahan into the paint, got deep, fouled hard, but she puts it in for two. Basil came over late. Nice spin move by Monahan to get away from Allen. Second foul on Basil. For us and you will be Emily Monahan. Monahan, a fiery competitor for the Crimson Storm. She'll get them going, no doubt about it. Lauren Reether on the bench at the moment for S and as Monahan hits the free throw. Up ahead, Tori Gittens left alone, miscommunication, and who SNU fortunate that the nation's three-point leader missed that three-pointer wide open from the left wing. Monahan cut off, got it away before she traveled. Here's Giles, hesitates, spins around, Pickens off the glass, it bounces off, and Winans there for the rebound for Henderson State. Pickens cut off, Winans, foul circle jumper. Why not? Why exactly. Luke, I, I had a chance to visit with Coach Thomas tonight, about an hour and 15 minutes before the game. As a matter of fact, exactly that. She looked up at the clock, she said 75 minutes. So I've got 75 minutes to just think about it, stew a little bit, and I said, hey coach, the hay's in the barn already. She, said, she just looked over at me, she said, we're ready. <laughs> That's an understatement. No kidding, here's Pickens, crosses over, cut off, outside, Gittens. Here's Allen, left corner three, that's long. A little bit too much energy on that one. Monahan finds a free lane down Main Street and she cruises in for the layup. Cuts the lead down to 10 with 2.40 to play. Something to note, Joey, SNU a big time third quarter team this year. That has been their period where they've really put the screws to people. Well, they're gonna need it. Foul 
called on Emily Monahan, and Trent May is furious right now. Now they're going to need that third quarter, even if they find themselves in a position coming back. You look at that, Monahan took the ball away and got run over. You can see uh, Trent May's consternation a little bit. First on Monahan, third team foul. Corner three, Huggins, that's no good. Loose ball, Farrar the offensive rebound for Henderson State. Farrar drives baseline, hangs, missed it. Knocked out of bounds off of Giddy's hands by Farrar. <laughs> Farrar a little upset. She wants, she wants every loose ball, every shot to fall. Can't blame her. She's a fiery competitor. She is. Her fit, she's a fifth year senior and at preseason media day, she talked to, she and Coach Thomas joked a little bit about how they butt heads a lot sometimes, but all for the betterment of the team. Giddy hands to Monahan on the curl. Monahan stops at the elbow, needs help, gets it back to Giddy. Gassaway, left side three, skims off. Adams, the offensive rebound. Shovels it over to Giddy. Loose ball. It's Pickens who runs it down. Henderson State, 10 point later, under two minutes to go. Pickens in the paint. Short shot. That's an air ball. Giddy has it this time. Monahan speeding down the court. Hangs. Left it short. Uh, that was A Pickens. foul on the floor. It's going on Winans. Well, that's, that's a heads-up play by Pickens to get down there and get a hand on that, Lauren forcing the first shot to be a miss. Replacing not giving up the easy Gassaway. basket, and now with that foul being on the court like that, it's not just free throws. There's Southern Nazarene's going to have to inbound this and go up against a strong, ready defense. Reether back in for Gassaway. Three fouls each way. Inbounds comes, and Reether standing on the sideline. The deflection by Allen. And a turnover for the Crimson Storm is number seven of the first half. Now, how big is that that defensive play by Pickens? Then it's not going to show up in the stats. She goes to the bench now to get a breather, but that was huge. Allen blazes past Reether and draws the foul. It's number two on Lauren Reether. So she's the first SNU player with two personal fouls. Winan checks out. She has two. So two fouls each on Basil and Winans inside. Could be an issue. But Allie McClendon into the game for the first time for Henderson State, the junior out of Stevensville, Texas. She played well on Friday, getting some maybe unexpected run against Arkansas Tech, but did the most with it. Allen scooping around Monahan, missed the shot. Monahan has the rebound, and she'll push. Monahan looking for help. Shovels to Adams on the wing, up top to Reether. 60 seconds to go in the quarter. Giddy with Edens on her, mismatch inside. Giddy to the basket. Too strong with a shot. Gittins clears. Adams is not 100% right now. Allen to the basket, high off the glass, no good. Allie McClendon off glass, <laughs> it goes! Allie McClendon threw it nearly to the shot clock, and it goes. Kiss off the glass, just a kiss. Second foul on Monahan with 45 seconds left in the first half. The Reddies lead by 12, make it 13 after that free throw from McClendon. SNU can go two for one if they hustle. Giles gives to Monahan. Monahan crossing over, steps around Huggins, scoop layup, no good. Monahan knocks it out of bounds, trying for the offensive rebound. It's Henderson State ball. 27 seconds to go. In the first half. Thomas grabbed, Jill Thomas grabbed her clipboard, but not gonna use or use it or lose it timeout. One shot here for the Reddies, who have dominated the first half. 54% shooting, they lead the number one seed, 44-31. Allen heads left, drives, cut off.
steps around Monahan, left-hand shot, no good. Monahan with the rebound, and that's how the first half comes to an end. A dream first half for Henderson State as they shoot 53% and lead the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene 44 to 31 at halftime. And Joey, the Reddies could not have drawn it up any better than that. Absolutely not. And everything that Coach Thomas put out there worked. They executed properly. The shots were falling. Unbelievable shots were falling. Don't know if you can keep that up for two consecutive halves like that, but what they have done is put together quite a run, and they did a great job on defense as well. Now, uh, for Southern Nazarene, obviously a couple of shots didn't go in that went in on Thursday night. You have to expect that might start to turn, although you can't bank on it. Uh, Southern Nazarene's going to have to get some stops. 44-31, the Reddies lead the Crimson Storm at the break. We will step aside and come back with first half stats and break it all down for you and get you ready for the second half of action here at Fire Lake Arena. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back on the GAC Sports Network. Hey, what you doing this for? Just out here for recreational purposes? <laughs> Working, man. Mission today is to work hard and so you can't go no more. It's always a team mission. Can't get nowhere without the team. It takes everybody. One, two, three. Man, hey, you better be open. You better be open. Man, listen, man, listen. It's only one attitude that you gotta bring. Let's go. That you need to bring. Work, 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 work. I mean, we come out here every day to get better. It feels easy. Everybody to do it, man. We work out on the street. You feel me? We the best in the nation. We outwork, yo. We outwork anybody. Every time I come through these lines, no matter what these lines at, work. Maximum effort. Come on, Let's go. How to spot a bull weevil? Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique, and they have unique opportunities. But they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. We're establishing this foundation where the students can, can then go and do the things that they want to do. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students revolves around Christ. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. You found a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose. Hey, future Eddies. Are you interested in a career in business? 
Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Who do we look to to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart, they are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? Last, but certainly not least, in fact, I would put it uh, first, and that is serving Christ. I like the fact that it's last because it does undergird everything that we do. Um, our responsibility, I believe more than anything else, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go! Swasu, the focus is you. Hey, future readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them, or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail, you're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. 
Hey Future Readies, are you interested in a career in technology? Henderson State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, until they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ when I want to be two? Be like Yusra. Let nothing destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? Who do we look to, to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who contribute with compassion, courage, confidence, People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. Tomorrow's difference makers and world changers will understand they're part of something bigger, an unstoppable force for good. More than book smart, more than business smart, they are wise in their whole being. These are the people who will shape our future, and you'll find them at OBU today. I am a future shaper. I'm a future shaper. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Welcome back to halftime at Fire Lake Arena, 44-31, Henderson State. The four seed leads top seed Southern Nazarene. Luke McConnell, Joey McWilliams back with you at Fire Lake Arena. And Joey, the Reddies on fire in that first half, shooting a sizzling 53%. And that's after a 40% second quarter. Seemingly everything was working well for Henderson State in that first half. Look, I, I can't find a flaw in the Reddy's game plan or the execution. I mean, no one's going to hit 100% of her shots. However, Pickens did her best to get 100% in there, winding up with 9 of 11 from the field, a game-high 20 points, a ridiculous number from the field. Nobody's going to hit us 100%. So you can't make that as a flaw that they didn't make every single one of the shots. Defense has been steady. Aggressive play has been steady. Open looks, ball movement, shots falling. I mean, finding the right people at the right time, getting the breathers in there. Coach Thomas is not only game planned well, she's executing well from the bench too. The players are executing, she's executing well. The first 20 minutes, you have to give an A plus with bonus points too. And on top of that, Joey, the Reddies are feeling really good about themselves right now. They knocked off Arkansas Tech in the first round of the tournament, and now they're up 13 at halftime over the number one seed and number seven team in the nation. The Reddies putting all the pressure on SNU here in the second half. You see the field goal percentage. The numbers for SNU aren't terrible. The turnovers are a bit of a problem. Reddy's seven points off those seven SNU turnovers. But frankly, offensively, that's not too far off pace for Southern Nazarene. The Reddies are just that hot right now. Absolutely are. And for Southern Nazarene, of course, Coach May, they've got to have some execution. They've got to make some adjustments on defense, not getting to the right place at the right time more than once. And that was a, a cause that you, I love the word consternation. That was definitely a cause for consternation for Coach May. The intensity level is there, the quickness is there, the ball movement's there on offense, shots just didn't fall right off the bat, and I think there was a little bit 
of a mental game, especially on the inside. Giddy was struggling, and so intermission, sometimes you get that out of your system, you let it just wash off your back, and you go on out there. Now you get to shoot in front of your own bench. You have them cheering you on. When you put the shot up in the air, I think that makes a difference. And you also mentioned, to go back to your point, Southern Nazarene's been a third-quarter team this year. They're going to have to be a third-quarter team tonight. Yay, you do see not want to go into the fourth quarter with uh, a lousy third quarter at this point. We'll see how the Crimson Storm respond two years ago on this court. SNU found themselves down 13 at the start of the fourth quarter against Arkansas Tech. They came back to tie the score late before falling at the buzzer on an Alex Hill short jumper. Starting lineups back out there for both squads. Reether, Monahan with two fouls each for SNU. Basil with two fouls for the Reddies. Here's Monahan outside. Giles, as SNU moves the ball around the perimeter. Adams, cut off. 13 on the clock for Giles. Drives, scoop layup is good as she took it right at Brindley Huggins. Just what the doctor ordered. And Monahan getting the defensive assignment on Pickens. You know, Joey. Hannah Giddy gets the accolade of Defensive Player of the Year, nation's leader in block shots, but Monaghan probably the best on-ball defender on this team, if not in the league. Yes, I, I agree with you 100%. She definitely, she can face up, she can stay in between her person and the goal. She moves her legs very, very well. I agree entirely. Ferrar with a nice off-balance jumper off the glass to answer Giles. Reether, cut off. Adams from the left elbow, in and out. Stops more important right now for SNU. Here's Huggins in transition, that short. Loose ball, Pickens saves it, but Giles comes away with it for SNU. Southern Nazarene benefits from having Adams on the court. She's still not 100%. Giddy off the glass for two. She goes into double figures with 10 to lead Southern Nazarene. Adams missed the first two thirds of the season with a hip injury sustained in the preseason. Still battling through that. Giddy with a block on Huggins. Here comes SNU. Add to that total. Reether hesitates, drives, left hand layup, left it short. Pickens the other way. Down low for Basil. Basil across the paint, left hand shot, no good. Monahan with a nice box out on Pickens. Monahan sprinting the other way, hesitates, stops in the paint, hook shot over Gittens, falls off, no good. A couple early misses for SNU in tight. Lead is 11 for the Reddies, 220 gone by third quarter. Well, of course, you don't have to get it all back at once, but you do need to get some of it back. And I'm pretty sure there was a hand on that ball. That's great defense there by Monahan. Imagine if Pickens will be hard pressed to find the same success offensively in the second half. Adams to Giddy, nice look on the roll, lost it, gets it back. Nine on the shot clock. Adams penetrates into the paint, steps around Farrar, scoop layup, good. Said they benefited from having her out there. She finally got a good look, and she actually created their, that opportunity. That, that was on number 15. Lead down to nine. A partisan SNU crowd here in Shawnee. Huggins lost it going up. Here comes Giles. Giles stops, pops, good. And if SNU can get this lead down, the crowd 100% on SNU's side here this evening, it will be a factor. Here's Gittens giving a lot of space for three. She rattled it in. And Jill Thomas wants time. And Joey Reether sagged too far off, getting stepped to the right and nailed the three. Exactly. And you know what? They, they couldn't have drawn up that basket any better because it was needed. Coach Thomas was going to call the timeout one way or the other. Now she can go in with a little bit of a breather. We'll take a quick break and come back with more. Reddy's lead by 10 on this. Tori Gittens three. We'll see you on the other side. How to spot a bull weevil. Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, 
and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique and they have unique opportunities, but they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. A lot of balls going in the basket here this evening, especially for Henderson State, who leads this one 49-39. Jenna Bay in for the Crimson Storm out of the timeout as Georgia Adams taking a breather. Samantha Roop was in the SNU huddle as well. Samantha, what'd you have for us? Coach May feeling a lot more pleased with the start from SNU right now. They, he mentioned having a great pressure on Jada Pickens, who scored a lot in the first half. Monahan across the paint, bumped, fouled. She'll shoot two. That's number three on Bobby Basil. Well, at one point, we were going to have to do a check on Pickens' humanity anyway, to find out that she wasn't just a robot out there firing up shots. I mean, what an impressive start to the game for her. 20 points right now. Giddy, the leading scorer for Southern Nazarene, she has 10. Monahan at the line for two free throws. Monahan, a strong 10. close to the regular season, averaged 16 points per game in February and shot 40% from three point range in that stretch. She missed that free throw, loose ball. It's knocked off of Winans' hands by Giddy. Monahan now with 10 Trent points. Trent May as well. furious. And so is the SNU sideline. It looks like Giddy knocked it off of Winans' hands. Here's Pickens, bodied up, poked away by Monahan. Now Thomas, the one furious. Here's Reether, shuffles to Bay, left hand layup, good. Great transition basketball from Southern Nazarene. The steal, looking ahead, right place, right time. Pickens takes it right at. Monahan and a foul is called on Hannah Giddy. Oh, they're going to give it to Monahan. That, that was who I thought. Number three yeah. on Monahan. That was who I thought was going to pick it up all along. I would have been surprised they went with Giddy. One thing to note, the Reddies have cooled off considerably from the field as Pickens hits the first free throw. 11 of 16 in the first quarter. They're 10 of 27 cents, Joey, just a tick above 33%. Question is, can that early stretch hold up? They lead by nine now as Pickens goes two for two. She's got 22. I really feel like free throws are going to come into play a little bit later on into this one. Monahan grabbed and held. And, and no one foul is on Gittens. No one any real foul trouble right now, but the, the pace this is going, it's it's starting to get a little bit more physical. The agitation on the sidelines also ramping up as Trent May and Jill Thomas in the official's ear every possible moment. Giddy on the inbounds to the basket, bumped off her spot by Winans. And Giddy going to the line for two free throws. That's number three on Winans. So three on Basil, three on Winans. And McClendon gonna be forced to come into the ball game here for Henderson State. You talk about the activity on the sideline and the intensity level, too. You have to realize what's on the line here for these two teams tonight. Of course, we had Philip Myers from Inkblot Sports earlier this week, but talking about what's on the line for these two teams in the semifinal for Henderson State, it's win or go home. Uh, not enough of a regular season resume to be able to get an at-large bid in the very, very brutally tough central region. 
Southern Nazarene has hosting duties on the line tonight. They're going to get an at-large bid one way or the other, but with an automatic bid, if they can make their way through this tournament, it is very likely the Central Region will have to go through Bethany, Oklahoma. Edens into the paint, bounces over to McClendon. Partially blocked by Giddy. McClendon got her own miss. Outside, Gittens open three, short. Loose ball, McClendon another offensive rebound. One dribble, puts it in. What a job by the junior from Stephenville, Texas. Allie McClendon, five points in the ball game and they, she keeps the Reddies up by nine. Reether posting up on Giddy. Backing down on McClendon, backing, backing, spins to the right hand, it bounces off. Good defense by McClendon. Pickens backing down Monahan, who's got three fouls. Offensive foul, and Jill Thomas is going to lose her mind on the sideline. Timeout on the court as Jada Pickens picks up the foul. 4.31 to go in the third quarter. 53-44 readies. We'll be back with more. This is the GAC Sports Network. We see you incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. Henderson State, two of their last 10 from the field, cooling off considerably as the game goes along after a scorching hot first quarter, but they still lead by nine, Joey. Well, and, and that actually is the number I want to look at. It was a 13-point advantage just a moment ago. For Southern Nazarene's perspective, you don't have to get it all back in the third quarter if you could just chip away at it. Midway through the third quarter, they chipped four away. Do it again in the next four and a half minutes, you put yourself in a good position for the fourth quarter. Giddy surveying, got it down deep to Monahan. A couple dribbles, she's hacked by Eddins, and that's foul number five on the Reddies here in the third quarter. Just a single foul on the Crimson Storm. First foul on Eddins. So Emily Monahan at the line for two free throws. A little bit of a sting there, as you can the see that on the Officials are on discussing, so Jill Thomas saying it's on the floor. It doesn't matter, it's the fifth team foul. Not sure what we're going to review here. I think we're gonna look at that, maybe that second swipe there by Eddins. So she came down, got Monahan, and then that second swipe, she also hit her in the face again. So I think that's what the officials are gonna look at. It's, and I, th I think it's the nose. Because that's, I mean, you can see her tearing up. It's, it's not like she's crying in a lot of pain, but that, that brush across the nose there, that's what the issue is for Monahan. They're gonna look at it again. So you see it up there in your picture. There's the foul right there. There's one. And then another swipe right there. It's kind of, it's kind of the double, just the double swing there. So checking for the flagrant foul here. It don't, don't really see much there. You know, it's hard to tell on replay without the whistle. If that right. second swipe comes after the whistle, I feel like you might be you might be justified in upgrading that, but yeah. you know, if it's a bang bang, you know, that's just that's just Eddins, hey, I missed missed the strip there. Let's try again. You know, you're already in your motion to strip the ball away. That's just that's just defense there. Just trying to hack at the ball. Agreed. Trying trying to make something happen. Happen to make contact, but 
you know, you, you've used the word a number of times this weekend, intent. It's tough to judge intent. Fit. From this perspective and from watching the review, Coach is being called in to have the discussion. And just a common foul. After a common foul. So two free throws for Monahan, who has 10 points. She's two for three at the free throw line tonight. Meanwhile, he's lead by nine. It gave Monahan an opportunity really to kind of clear things up. But as, as I mentioned, you know, that brush across the nose both times causing the tears. And, you know, it's just a, an, a natural reaction. So she's trying to wipe her face a little bit. She had time to get the composure there, get all that, kind of, you know, rub her nose down a little bit too and, and make sure that she's all right and take the shots. Lead down to seven. Pickens back the other way. Drives all the way to the basket. Off class and good. Jada Pickens. Jada Pickens, 24 points. She is the reason Henderson State is winning this game by nine right now. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Still a ton of time left. Here's Reether outside Giles. Three on the way. Hits good. Just the second three-pointer of the night for Southern Nazarene. Here's Gittens to answer, and she does. Complete breakdown by the Crimson Storm, and Tori Gittens makes some pay with her second triple. Lead back to nine. Reether, Pickens flies by, nice dish to Giddy. Easy fantastic. left hand deuce. Absolutely fantastic. But Joey, I don't know how you leave the nation's number one three point shooter that alone. That's just inexcusable. Here's Eddins, left it short, loose ball. Gittens the one to track it down. That's a new faithful one at backcourt. Looked like Gittens touched it this side of half court and she goes glass to push the lead back to nine. Yeah. This is fun, Joey. It's, it's a valid point to chase it down, but I agree with you. I think she touched it on this side. As it, and, and the officials really were looking more at the contact at the glass, not the, the, uh, the dribble past the line. Doesn't matter, it is, it's exciting. Giles, outside Bay, run off the line by Farrar. Swing it around to Reether. Seven on the shot clock for Lauren Reether. Reether to the basket, left hand shot, no good. Loose ball, and that's a shot clock violation. Reether got decked. Shot clock violation. Reith are slow to get up. So you see here, Gittens touches the ball with right, right at the midcourt line and the officials behind the play, so can't really see that depth. Yeah, that's a tough call. That, that left foot was on the line. I don't know, I don't think that's a game changer at this point. Pickens. SNU in a 1-3-1 zone here. Monahan knocks it away from Pickens. She got it back. Here's Edens in the corner. Doubled. Back up top to Huggins. Farrar knifing through. Edens, she'll try a three. It skims over the rim, and Reether has the rebound for SNU. Two minutes to go, third quarter. Nine-point lead for Henderson State. You just feel the tension in the air, Joey. The SNU faithful just screaming for an opportunity to make some noise. Reether, another miss at the rim. Up ahead, Farrar drives baseline. Cut off nicely by Bay. Here's Eddins. To Huggins now. 90 seconds to go, third quarter. 13 on the shot clock for Huggins, who gets it to McClendon. Now Farrar. Trying her hand inside and a reach in and a foul on Jenna Bay. Foul's on Jenna Bay, that's her first. Well, first foul on Bay, second team foul on the, on the Crimson team. Storm, but Farrar shooting right, two free for throws. For two. You feel the intensity in the air, you're talking about that, but it's not really, I mean, it's well, an I intensity on the right. court, but pressure doesn't seem to be reflected on these players right now. They're playing with abandon. They are. Farrar's first rattles in. That puts the lead back at double digits, Joey, for as hard as SNU has come at the readies. They've had answers. Second one's good. 
So the lead back to 11 for Henderson State. SNU's only whittled off two points from the 13-point halftime deficit. Plenty of time left, but it's running lower by the minute. Monahan bumped on the drive by McClendon. First foul on McClendon, so Monahan shoots two with 121 to go in the quarter. SNU 54% from the field in the quarter. The Reddies 40%, but they've made a couple of threes to keep SNU at bay. Well, this is this one is a fun one to be a part of. I I have to tell you, I mean there there have been so many great GAC basketball tournament games over the years. There are some that are instant classics, and, and we're in the middle of one right now. Monahan second rolls in. Fitting for a lot of these players and <laughs> official sends both teams to their bench area. Not sure what we're gonna be looking at here, but fitting that for a team with a lot of fifth year seniors on both sides that that these two teams would be playing each other in a tight game yes. like this. Four years ago, in 2020, these two played an overtime game in the quarterfinals in the 4-5 matchup. Southern Nazarene, the four, Henderson State, the five. That one was quite the game as SNU came back from a big deficit in that one against Henderson State. The Reddies won it in overtime. But man, that was, that was a wild one, Joey. Okay, they've gone to the monitor now. So we're trying to get word on what exactly is being reviewed at the moment. I think the official has the stopwatch out. I think the clock didn't run at some point on the previous possession. That appears to be a, a, a proper observation, Luke. Looking like a clock issue here. What it does serve for both these teams is an opportunity for a breather, a timeout. Both coaching staffs got a chance to talk to their teams. Now, Henderson State was warned they couldn't just sit down and take it as if it were a full timeout. They had to stay on the court, but gives these teams a breather. And for as much energy as has been used over the course of this game so far, anytime you get a stoppage in action, that's going to benefit. And the clock did change. It so they knocked 10 seconds yeah. off of it. So 110 to go, third quarter. Reddy's lead by nine, 62 to 53. Pickens into the front court. She's been electric tonight, 24 points. One minute remaining in the third quarter, one minute. Edens in deep, pivoting, pivoting, still pivoting. Finds Huggins right wing for three, off the mark. Gassaway a nice rebound. Edens knocked it away, but Monahan came up with it. Huggins now one for eight from the field after going for 21 last night. Giddy to Reether, and an offensive foul is called on Monahan battling for position with J.J. Eddins, and that's number four on Emily Monahan, and that's a big development for the Crimson Storm. Here's the replay. Monahan got it up high, and uh -huh. Eddins went down. So Monahan checks out. We take the big spark plug off the court for SNU as well as the best on-ball defender. Five-second difference game to shot clock as Pickens dribbles against her former teammate Abby Giles up top. <laughs> Outside, Farrar into the paint, forced it up on Gideon, oh. got it to go. 
She pulled that from her hip pocket. Wreath across half court, hesitates, drives to the bucket, off glass. It bounces in at the end of the third quarter. A huge bucket for the Crimson Storm. But at the end of three, Henderson State 10 minutes away from an upset. They lead it 64-55. As we head to the final stanza, we'll be back with the fourth quarter after this break. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them, or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail, you're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. It is bright inside Fire Lake Arena. Need those shades sometimes, but <laughs> Henderson State shining brightly tonight, leading by nine as we start the fourth quarter. Pickens kicks it out to Huggins. The pass is wide. That's a turnover. That's what the doctor ordered for the Crimson Storm as they trail 64-55. SNU 57% in that third quarter with the Reddies. Not giving up easy. Here's Giddy backing down on McClendon. Right hand hook. It bounces off. Loose ball. Gassaway in there. She's tied up. Possession arrow favors SNU. Nice job by Gassaway and Bay inside to save the possession for SNU. Right. Hannah Giddy now just 5 of 15 from the field. She does Here's Basil and Gittens back in for Henderson State. She does have 14 along with Monahan after three. Reether with 10 points. Three players in double figures for the Crimson Storm. Reether looking, and that's a five-second count on the Crimson Storm as Reether couldn't get it in in time. Giddens has eight for Henderson State, 13 for Farrar. And Jaden Pickens, Jada Pickens with 24 points on 10 of 13 from the field. She had 27 at Washita Baptist. She was fouled there by Abby Giles. And Pickens will go to the line for two free throws. Fellas on Abby Giles, her second, team's first of the fourth quarter. Second on Giles, first on the Crimson Storm, and Pickens looking to push the lead back into double figures. Perfect on the first, Pickens 84% at the free throw line, seventh in the conference. You see Jill Thomas, she was ready for this matchup last night in the post-game press conference. The Pickens with 25. She had a season-high 27 at Washita Baptist. But, Joey, that was a double overtime game. Yeah. She got 25 through 31 minutes. Reether's three is no good. Long rebound out to Gittens. Here comes Henderson State. Nice adjustment. She sensed Bay behind her. Farrar across the paint. Edens now with it, backing down on Gassaway. Gives to Basil, right elbow, 10 on the clock. That one's ripped away by Reether. Gittens has it. Gittens, nice closeout by Reether. Three on the clock for Pickens. Floater over Giddy, <laughs> off the glass and good. <laughs> Jada Pickens, 27 points. The lead is 12 for Henderson State, eight and a half to go. What a night for the senior. Pickens is operating with a sixth sense, maybe a seventh right now. She is firing on all cylinders. Giddy pivoting to the right hand, got it to go. Trent May wants time with 8.13 to play. 67-57. Timeout. 
And Joey, just a unbelievable night for Jada Pickens. 11 of 14 from the field, but those two three-pointers in the first half, you can't overstate how good that was for a 21% three-point shooter. Uh, no, I agree with you. It's, that's a very much a good point. I, I looked at her play right now. Here to start the fourth quarter, she knows exactly where to be, exactly where to put the ball. She knows where the shot clock is. She knows how much time's left. She's very aware, has a court awareness that's just going beyond, I know where the rim and the backboard are right now. She, she is dialed into this game. Her strong play this year started coming on right as Natalie Cardenas went out for the year with a knee injury after 14 games. Cardenas, the starting point guard as a freshman out of Mesquite, Texas, but when she went down, it was right about the time that Pickens was really starting to get back in the groove from that ACL injury a year ago. And could not have come at a better time for Henderson State. Jill Thomas said that her play kept them from going into a tailspin. And they have certainly had their ups and downs throughout the year that didn't solve everything or prevent some tough moments from happening. But it was huge and prevented Henderson State from really dropping off the table after a strong first half of the year. Here she is again, picks up her dribble this time. In trouble, in trouble, gets it to Gittins. SNU in a zone. Pickens traveled with it. So the zone forces a turnover. Still eight minutes to play, 10 point lead for the Reddies. A lot of time left for the Crimson Storm. Monahan at the scores table set to check in with four fouls, next dead ball. Reether drives baseline, got by Pickens and lays it in for two. That was easy for Lauren Reether. That was too easy. Reether now with 12. Pickens back the other way again. And the Pickens. Just everything going in for Pickens tonight. Lead back to 10. Giles open three from the wing. In and out. Good look. Nesson, you needed that. Here's Pickens again across the paint. Out to Gittens. Her three. That's good. Six-point swing in favor of the Reddies as they lead by 13 again. It's what they led by at halftime. Reether to the basket, hit the underside of the rim with it. Pickens didn't see Gittens on the break. Gets it over to Basil. Farrar left open, drives baseline instead. Reverse side, rejected by Giddy. Another block. Reether hesitates, drives on Eddins, and a blocking foul on Eddins. Sends Lauren Reether to the line for two free throws. Fouls on JJ Eddins, that's her second. Second on Eddins, subs both ways. Huggins and Allen back in for the Reddies. And Jillian Crawford. As Gittins and Pickens check out. Gassaway and Bay check out. Jillian Crawford, the freshman out of Piedmont, coming in with 6.37 to play. Monahan back in with four personal fouls. 13-point lead for Henderson State, six and a half minutes to play. It's getting late for the Crimson Storm. First one from Reether is good. Southern Nazarene now 12 for 14 from the free throw line. Reether second on the way, bounces off, and Farrar clears it. So 12-point lead for Henderson State, six and a half minutes to play. Again, 1-3-1 here for SNU. Farrar tries the corner three, it's off. Giles the rebound for SNU. Lead pass ahead, Monahan hesitates, drives on Huggins, lost it, out of bounds. Turnover, Crimson Storm. And you have to wonder if Monahan has in the back of her mind the fact those four fouls are there, doesn't want to pick it up, being too aggressive going to the basket. 30-second timeout called by Jill Thomas with 6.15 to play. See that hesitation? Monahan just, just lost it as she was trying to gather to go up. Crimson Storm, 50% shooting in the second half. The Reddies, 3 of 4 thus far in the fourth quarter. 
Joey, they've had an answer every time SNU's tried to make a run. They've turned the Crimson Storm aside. They've only allowed SNU to cut it down to, I believe, six here in the second half. That's as close as SNU has been. Just an answer every time. Well, I, you can't say enough then about the play from Henderson State to be able to answer the number seven team in the country like that, building up a lead. And they can afford now, as, as the minutes start to tick off, to trade basket for basket with a 12-point advantage. Some full court pressure applied by the Crimson Storm. They sink back into a zone. Baseline, Eddins. Needs help. Gives it to Basil. Nice job holding on to that. Farrar. Seven on the clock for Eddins. Now four, three. Reether takes it away from her. Monahan has it. Lost her footing. Gives it up to Reether. Reether, cross court skip pass for Crawford. Here's Giles. It's only the second time this year SNU has allowed 70 points. They lost the other one. Monahan left it short on Eddins. Basil has the rebound. Five and a half minutes to play. The Crimson Storm can't get buckets when they need them. She's going to feel it more tomorrow. Monahan playing through some pain. And she took that trip to the court just a moment ago. She, she has some pain in those knees right now. She's not feeling it now, but it'll hurt tomorrow. Allen corner three, no good. Reether has it. Here comes the senior. Outside Monahan, run off the line. Down low, Giddy intercepted by Farrar. What a play by the fifth year senior up ahead. Allen, under five minutes to play. Farrar outside to Eddins. Farrar wide open, wing three, hits good. That might be a dagger, Joey, with four and a half minutes to play. The Reddies lead by 15. Here's Giddy. She's fouled by Basil on the catch. That's four on Bobby Basil. Second team foul on the Reddies. You look at that pass from Monty and nice help side defense by Farrar. And, and you look at that, Farrar, she's, she's just a, a cornerback. She was just reading the quarterback's eyes. She stepped in the passing lane and she gets it all the way back and winds up making a three-pointer after that. Incredible, here we go. Gets the steal and there's the three. Inbounds comes to Giddy. She's fouled by Farrar coming over the top. Farrar can't believe it, but not sure why. Third team foul on the Reddies, four and a half minutes to play. 15 point lead for Henderson State. SNU needs points and they need them quick. Here's Giddy backing down to McClendon. Takes her to the baseline, pivoting. Right hand hook, it's good. And, uh, Giddy. <laughs> and the Ender <laughs> Henderson State crowd Begging for a, a call with a little bit of an elbow as Giddy cleared some space. Here's Farrar, open three again, missed it. Giddy has the rebound. Four minutes to play, 13 point lead for Henderson. Reether hesitates, inside out on Pickens, missed the shot, got her own miss, forced it back up through contact, and she'll shoot two. Well, that's a, a big part of Reether's game when she does get down inside looking to make that contact, draw the foul from the opponent. That's on McClendon, her second, team's fourth. Eddins checking back in for Huggins. J.J. Eddins returns, replacing Bradley Huggins. Reether, 13 points tonight. One of two at the free throw line, six boards, four assists. Hits the first. See in there, job on the first one, but foul on the second one. They gave the foul to McClendon. McClendon definitely did not commit the foul <laughs> there, but doesn't matter too much at this point. Reether goes two for two, lead down to 11 with four minutes to play. Pickens doubled in the backcourt, gives it up to Farrar. Farrar into the front court, up ahead to Gittens. Pickens crosses over, outside. 
Reddy's moving the ball effectively around the zone. Pickens, corner three, that's short. McClendon up for the offensive rebound. Huge offensive rebound there for McClendon and Henderson State. Pickens throws it up and in. Unbelievable shot from Jada Pickens. Because 31 tonight. Yes, because Jada Pickens. Reether to Crawford. Crawford needing help, gives it to Giddy. Down low, left hand shot off glass and good. Timeout, Trent May. That's the final timeout for SNU with 3.06 to play. The Reddies have matched the most points allowed by SNU all season long. This will be a full timeout. Here's Pickens. I mean, just look at this. Awkward throwing it against the momentum to the timeout. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. We're back here. At, we're back here at Fire Lake Arena. Trent May hoping his team can pull something out of their hat. Samantha Roop, what did he have to say in the huddle? May's not too pleased with the defense once again. He mentioned Jada Pickens having 31 and that she could not get the ball. She's got it now. <laughs> Nearly traveled. That's and that pass intercepted the freshman Jillian Crawford stops on a dime puts it up and in lead down to nine with 250 left SNU not done yet Pickens doubled in midcourt loose ball it's got through and Crawford's legs and kittens there to corral it Monahan with four fouls needs to be careful for SNU ripped it away Crawford going down for it Pickens runs over Monahan that's a blocking foul on Monahan and that's number five and the SNU faithful not pleased to say the least that's a difficult one Monahan tried to draw it but momentum going the wrong way So Monahan fouls out 14 points, six rebounds. And Trent May giving it to the official right now. SNU takes the full 60 second time to send the extra get gas away in. into the game. <laughs> Second team no. foul on the Crimson Storm. Whether you like the call or not, I like that the prerogative of the coach to take all the time that you need to be able to have the discussion with the official you want to. Crawford, Bestering Pickens up top and another whistle on SNU. That one's on Crawford. That was on Jillian Crawford her first. Now Samantha mentioned that Pickens didn't need to get the ball. And Coach May obviously doesn't want her to be able to have the ball. They're going to have to send somebody out there as a spy on her a little bit more than that. Here she has it once again. They've got to make something happen. Time's ticking away. She's doubled, goes down. McClendon has it near midcourt. Gittens has it. Five on the shot clock. Here's Gittens to the basket. Left hand layup, no good. McClendon, the offensive rebound. Didn't hits hit loose. Rim. Didn't and hit the rim. That's a shot clock violation as the ball never hit the rim. Still two minutes to go, Joey. This one's not over yet. You know, the biggest thing for Henderson State there is that 30 seconds ticked off the clock. That that's 
the big, big thing right now. Reether pounding the left-hand dribble, gives it to Giddy. Giddy working on McClendon, backing, backing, spinning, spinning to the left hand, left it short, loose ball, foul on the rebound. Who's it on? It's on Henderson State. Fouls on McClendon going for the loose ball. See McClendon over the back there. So Hannah Giddy at the line for two free throws. One forty-one left. SNU down by nine. They'll have to do it without senior Emily Monahan. Hannah Giddy with the first free throw. She's got 21 now and nine boards. Second one for Giddy is good. So the lead is seven. Still a lot of time left. Which veteran team is going to be the one to come through? Edens. In trouble, gets it up ahead to Pickens. SNU falls back into their defense. Crawford and Reether all over Pickens, scrambling at it. Pickens steps through, intercepted. Giles takes it in, and a foul on McClendon. Two shots coming for Abby Giles. Something to note here on defense is that Southern Nazarene has just three fouls right now. They're going to try to stop the clock with free throws or something like that in the future. They still have to foul one more time even to get to that point. 122 left. It's a seven point game. Giles first is no good. One more for the senior from Searcy. It's up and true. Six point game. 122 left. Farrar has it in the backcourt as the Reddies continue. Work it ahead. Here's Gittens outside to Edens. Reddies content to run clock. Pass up ahead over Pickens' head. Giles has it. Driving to the bucket. Stops. Miss the shot, but she'll go to the line for two. It's a good defensive play. And if you're going to get the foul there, you keep Giles from actually making the shot. It's a good foul. Nearly made it, probably should have made it. Edens took a shot to the face from Giles on the shot. 104 left and things are getting crazy at Fire Lake Joey. Yeah, and, and Southern Nazarene can't afford and needs to take some chances on defense. Again, foul to give. Here it is. Giles just on the shot, on the follow through wow. there with the left hand. Missed the shot. McClendon tracks down the rebound. Farrar is fouled by Gassaway going for the steal. That's okay. That's that's the that's, right call. That is the right Fourth call. Fourth team foul on SNU. The Reddies, a great free throw shooting team, number one in the league and 10th nationally, 78%. So you can't count on Henderson State missing free throws if you're SNU, because they are very good at it. Here's Eddins. Looking up ahead to Farrar. Farrar into the front court. Knocked away by Giles with a foul. Oh, timeout is called by Jill Thomas right before the steal. No foul. 30-second timeout called by Jill Thomas. As she tries to calm her team down. SNU has whittled this 13 point lead down to five over the last two minutes and change. Look, I don't, Not over yet. I, I don't know that 77 points wins it. I, I would think if, if, I, if I were looking from Henderson State's perspective, you need, you need at least one more basket to go in. Two possession game like that. Southern Nazarene's missed a lot of shots today. You don't think they're going to miss forever. They may, but you expect to see at least one more go in. I was really surprised by that timeout. I was con concerned from a fan's perspective that that was a foul that was called. Thought it would have been an anticipated foul. Nice to see the official made a good call, and, and it was a timeout called ahead of that. 19 on the shot clock. Five-point lead for the Reddies. 
Edens inbounding, looking, looking, gets it into Gittens. Gittens surrounded, tried to get her away, stolen by Reether. Reether hesitates to Giles, open three, it's good! 37 seconds left, and a foul is called on Reether in the backcourt. Wow, Reether, too aggressive there. Number five on the team. The 15 foul on SNU. Not a lot of contact there, Joey, but reether has got to be smarter in that situation. SNU didn't have to foul. You look at it here, just a bump there, and the official's arm was going up very quick. They're going to check the clock. So from Henderson State's perspective then, points crucial here. Coming down to making free throws tonight, Henderson State from the free throw line. Pretty effective, six of seven. However, it has been quite a while since they've been there. Trent May telling this other, one of the officials that the official who made the call is taking it personal for the berating he gave him earlier in the fourth quarter. And we'll see what they reset the clock to. But it's a one possession game, Joey. They add a second back, 35.7 seconds on the clock. Southwestern and Harding watching from the wings. They're up next to take on one of these two teams. The number seven team in the land, Southern Nazarene, not going quietly into the night. The Reddies trying to hang on. Jada Pickens, 84% at the foul line. It has been her show tonight. She hits the first one calmly. One more makes it a two possession game. The second one is true. No timeouts for SNU. Bradley Huggins returns. Huggins checks in for Gittens. Replacing Tori Gittens. 36 seconds left, plenty of time for SNU to score and foul to extend the game. Four point game, but SNU does need a hurry. Here's Reether, drives to the basket, through contact, missed it. Giddy the offensive put back with 27 seconds left. Eddins gets it into Farrar. Farrar quickly into the front court. Here's Pickens holding 22 seconds. And a foul is called with 20 seconds left. Fouls on Gassaway for SNU. Oh, and SNU has, has to be fouling at this point. That's fine. Exactly. The one, one person you don't want to have the ball is what uh, was mentioned a while ago. You don't want it to be in Pickens' hands if you're Southern Nazarene. For the Reddies, just give it to number two for the rest of the night. Possession arrow favors Henderson State in the event of a tie-up. Pickens goes two for two again. 20 seconds left, Jenna Bay checking in Jennifer. for Hannah Giddy. Three point shots coming here for SNU. Here's Reether hustling into the front court. Here's Gassaway, shot fake, driving kick. Reether, three pointer on the way, it's short, loose ball. It goes out of bounds off Henderson State with six and a half seconds left. The Crimson Storm running out of time here. Four point lead for the Reddy, 6.6 .6 left. Reether triggering in in front of her own bench. Gets it into Crawford, shot fake, three pointer on the way. Off the back iron, and it's the rebound. And Henderson State pulls the upset. They're going to the GAC Tournament Final for the first time in school history. It was the Reddies night tonight, no doubt about it. 81-77, Henderson State pulls the upset over number seven, Southern Nazarene. A tremendous game from the Reddies. The Crimson Storm made a run, but the Reddies held on in the end.
and they will head to Championship Sunday here at Fire Lake Arena and face the winner of Harding and Southwestern. We'll wrap things up on the other side. Coming up next. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, until they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ when I want to be two? Be like you, Sra. Let nothing destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. <laughs> What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? Henderson State pulls the upset tonight, 81 to 77 over top seed and number seven in the nation, Southern Nazarene. Samantha Roop is with the star of the game, Jada Pickens. Jada, congratulations. How are you feeling right now? Um, it's just a wonderful feeling to be here right now. Um, we were down um, in the conference, regular conference. We were 2-0 uh, and with them, and it was just like we had to come out and we had to get it done. 35 points today, leading the whole game, everyone. How does that feel? What was your mentality going into the game? I knew if I had my team behind me, we could do anything and just accomplish anything, and I'm so happy. I'm thankful for them. They just really pushed me through practice and everything every day. So. Again, first time in women's program history. How does it feel going to the championship tomorrow? Amazing. It's the greatest feeling right now, honestly, yes. Any final thought, like going into the championship, like what's the game plan? What do you need to change or continue to do? Um, I know rebounding for us is a big thing. So if we get that done and we play defense like we've been playing the past few days, um, we're unstoppable. Congratulations. Back to you. Jada Pickens, 35 points. She was outstanding all night long, Joey, from the get-go. Tough shots in the paint. She hit a couple threes in that first half, and that seemed to really buoy the Reddies across the board. Now, I like what she had fantastic in the back-to-back -back nights. We'll see what they do with the day three. Nine for 21 from three-point land, 91% from the line tonight, matched in turnovers, had only 33 rebounds. But you know what? When you shoot as well as they did, you don't need that many rebounds. No doubt about it. You see about even on field goal percentage, even in turnover destiny, a slight edge on the boards. But the edge in three-pointers, the big difference tonight for Henderson State. And, Joey, that's what makes this a dangerous team. They're dangerous across the board because they can shoot the three, and when they're shooting it well, they can score with anyone. The Reddies celebrating in jubilation here tonight at Fire Lake Arena as they have punched their ticket to Championship Sunday. Harding and Southwestern Oklahoma State coming up next. They'll face those Reddies. We'll find out which of the Bulldogs or the Bisons will take on. That's coming up next on the GAC Sports Network.